Hello, Keesler. I'm Colonel Blackwell. This video is coming to you a little bit out of cycle. Um, normally, we give you kind of one video per week, but there have been so many rumors spreading across Keesler that I wanted to address them now. Um, please note, as I do this, I'm going to address rumors that apply to Keesler only. There's a lot of other rumors floating around around the Air Force. I suggest that you go to some of the um, key places to get that information. For example, uh, the DOD has literally a COVID rumor control website. It's a great website. Go see that one there. For me, I'm just going to handle what's going on here at Keesler. The first rumor I'd like to address is about HPCon Delta, or Health Protection Condition Delta. There's been a lot of people worried about when are we going to go to HPCon Delta. Um, it's important to remember that HPCon Delta is different than Force Protection Con Delta. They do not equal the same thing. Even if and when we go to HPCon Delta does not mean that we're going to shut down the base. And it's going to probably take me a while to get to HPCon Delta. That doesn't mean that we're not doing things to keep the base safe in the meantime. We have a lot of different um, containment measures currently in place to keep the base safe, even if the number of um, uh, positive cases continues to go forward. For example, we have issued everybody an operational critical badge that will help us when we come to the time where I need to bring only operational critical people on base. That doesn't mean I've gone to HPCon Delta just yet. Another one is you guys have seen the different, the, the yellow jersey barriers all throughout around base. That's going to help me do base containment, um, area containment across the base if we need to. Again, not necessarily HPCon Delta. One last thing on this topic is I want to point out we're actually doing some HPCon Delta measures right now to keep the base safe. The next rumor that's out there is, Colonel Blackwell, why have you stopped posting Keesler's positive COVID cases on the webpage? Bottom line is for operational security reasons, specifically with regard to readiness, we've decided to take those cases um, off that public webpage um, so that other people don't use that data against um, us as a military. We do, however, continue to track those numbers locally and provide that data to the appropriate people who need that data to make their decisions. Another question I've received is, why have you restricted retirees' access from the, from the BX? Again, our effort is to try to slow the spread of this virus however I can, while still offering some key services to both our retirees, our active duty, and families. So for example, commissary and the hospital are still open to retirees, active duty, and their families. On that note, I've also gotten the question of Colonel Blackwell, why don't you limit the hours at the commissary from Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 10 for active duty only or for retirees only? That is, it's a good idea, but it's actually harder to implement than you would think. Communication is always difficult. Communicating across the base and to the public uh, is not very easy, and I'm not quite sure that the benefit that we would get out of that um, it is worth implementing those measures. We are still going to push to make sure that the commissary has everything stocked on the shelves, so that shouldn't be an issue. Another question I've received is on grooming standards. Colonel Blackwell, are you going to um, lessen grooming standards during this time? Right now, I am not. Right now, we have the capability to maintain those grooming standards. The BX is doing a great job of making sure that clippers are stocked on the shelf, both in the main BX and in the triangle. And we have a team working very hard to make sure that we safely bring back the barbers, both in the main BX area and in the triangle, so that our barbers can still continue to cut hair but under the specific guidance of our public health area. So that will be coming soon. Um, until we have no capability to maintain those grooming standards, then I will lighten it. Right now, we have the capability to do it, so we expect people to maintain the standards that we expect from our United States Air Force. We're still in the profession of arms. We still have a duty. Another rumor that's out there is on food delivery. Colonel Black, are you still going to let um, food deliveries occur on base, and is it still okay to get things delivered? Absolutely. We are following the CDC guidance on that, and I encourage you guys to continue to have food delivered to your, to your homes and to your work centers. Again, go out there and look at the CDC's guidance on that.
Another question I received is, Colonel Blackwell, why did you have the threat working group meet? I did that because although uh, we have this threat of COVID, uh, there's other threats that are still out there to our base and to our people, both in the physical domain and in the cyber domain. So I want folks to look at our threat from an OSI perspective, from a security forces perspective, and from a cyber perspective, and make sure that we are not letting down and keeping folks safe in all of those domains. Another question that I was given as I was putting this together is basic military training. I encourage you to read some of the articles that are already published on basic military training coming to Keyser because it provides you a good overview of what's going on with that mission. Bottom line, yes, it's going to be 60 trainees that come to Keesler as a proof of concept. But let me reassure you that we are doing everything we can during this crisis to make sure that we are bringing those folks in safely and keeping the rest of our population here on Keesler safe. Another question I get repeatedly is, what is the difference between quarantine and isolation? The biggest difference is that isolation is for somebody who is ill, somebody who has shown those symptoms. But between the two, isolation and quarantine, they will still have 14 days of restricted movement. And again, that's per CDC guidance. I'm very proud of what our MAGCOM has put together and our public health has put together on how do we then safely bring those people back off of isolation or quarantine and back into the work center. There's very good guidelines that they will follow when we do bring somebody out of that isolation or quarantine. Another question I get is, Colonel Blackwell, what keeps you up at night? There are a couple things that keep me up at night. The first one is people not taking this COVID virus seriously. That person who thinks that they're immune to it and it's okay for them to go to the beach or, or not follow the CDC guidance, that one person who gets it and spreads it around to everybody, that concerns me. But behind the scenes, whether it's our emergency operations center, our awesome, awesome medical center, or our public health, they are doing some amazing things to make sure that we are doing everything we can on Keesler to keep us safe and healthy. Another thing that concerns me is suicides. Now more than ever, we have our four pillars of resilience. You have your mental, physical, spiritual, and social. Underlying all of those, I would argue, is also the pillar of grit, of self-reliance. This is a difficult time for many people. And you will hear, hear us use different words. Instead of saying social distance, we're now gonna say physical distance. Because yes, while we need to maintain that physical distance to help spread, um, slow the spread of the virus, Keeping that social connection is now even more important than ever, and we have to work at it a little bit harder. The last thing that concerns me is safety. Everybody is distracted. It, this is understandably concerning for everybody out there, and people's minds are focused on different things. Please be diligent. Please drive safely. Please make sure you maintain your focus during these crazy times. I've also received a lot of feedback based on the email that I recently sent out to Keesler Wide. It was interesting because some of that feedback was questions that we've already posted on our um, keesler.af.mil page and on our Keesler Facebook page. So that is a good reminder to me that, that I need to do a better job of making sure that I know that not everybody looks at Facebook or that Keesler page. So I will do a better job of summarizing those decisions and those actions in email. So now every Monday, uh, please be on a lookout for an email from me, helping summarize some of the things that we are doing across Keesler. I'm sure there's other rumors that are out there, but this is what I captured thus far. If you have any other feedback, please let us know. Um, I will answer any rumors or answer any questions that you have. In the meantime, remember our dragon marches. Slowing down is important. Taking care of each other is important, especially during this time. Thank you for taking this crisis seriously. Thank you for keeping our mission going, and thank you for taking care of each other.